notify you once you begin your broadcast. The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. All right, well, this is Jeff at the Big Hairy Dog. Thank you guys for joining. Um, this is a webinar on V9 reporting. So we're looking at the report types and then uh, how to change things in Crystal and, and uh, scripting them to run them and emailing them, that kind of thing. Um, <clears throat> there are the three sort of levels in V9 reporting that uh, I would sort of call out, I guess. And that would just be things that we can do on the end that don't require a secondary piece of software. Like I could copy a report in, in version nine and, and register a new version of it and set up filters however I want to run it. So if I have one report I want to run two different ways for two different stores or, or whatever, I could make as many copies of a given report. That's, that's level one. Level two is what you can change in Crystal. And level three is what you have to change in the SQL level, right? So that's basically sort of the way I, I view reports anyway. Um, so uh, again, if any of you guys want to be unmuted, let me know. I will absolutely unmute you um, and uh, just just pop it in the chat and ask a question if you want to. Um, all right, so let's look at report types real quick. And report types get a little bit um, ambiguous, so to speak, in, in version 9. Uh, and I'll, I'll let you know what that means in a minute here. But uh, so the basic report types, audit is a new category that they added that gives you access to permissions and who logged on when. Um, I haven't run a lot of those reports, but when I have, they've been very interesting. It's just uh, a lot of people don't have a great need for them. Um, we're going to skip over custom, come back. The, um, the, the retail pro types, right, are audit, journal, list, merchandise, and summary, the custom and the other are the other th th folders, the extra folders, shall we say. Um, and mine has been hacked up a bit, so I've got reports in my menus that wouldn't be in everybody's menu. But a journal is a transactional report, right? Everybody knows that. I don't think we need to go over this in deep detail, but if you run a journal, you're looking for a transaction. Uh, you're not looking for an item per se, you're looking for the transaction the item is on, whether it be a purchase order, a sale, a receiving transaction or transfer, whatever you're running. There are a plethora of, of uh, reports in the journal's menu. Lists um, is the basically the area where they, they give you access to the customer list, the, the employee list, the department list, the vendor list, and they've added to that the, the central gift certificates and the gift cards, which are really excellent uh, reports, actually, to, if, you, if you do the central gift card thing. You gotta use that one. Um, Merchandise reports from days of old and from really Retail Pro are meant to be multi-data type reports. So the, the type of report here is to say on hand in sales um, or uh, two sales ranges like this year versus last year, right? Um, the one that we, we, we need to peek at is the, these top two right here. I've got some weird stuff in my menu, but normally the top two are these DT reports. And we, we will probably take a quick peek at those because those are actually a lot like version 8 was. Uh, to round out the, the, the Retail Pro report types, though, summary reports. And the summary report is the meat and potatoes of reporting, I, honestly. they uh, You can summarize pretty much everything in here. The, the format may not be the best, uh, but, the, you know, the naming convention, as you probably already know, is the... Um, the data type, like sales versus PO, followed by the level of detail, sales associate versus sales cashier versus sales department versus sales discount, hour, item, style, vendor, right? So that's a pretty solid naming convention. They screwed up one time down here. They, they named this one backwards. This one should be receiving summary, not summary receiving. But hey, you know what? They only made one mistake, right? It's not bad. Um, the other two areas, custom 
this is where we stuffed all of our reports. So uh, there's two folders that are natively named in Oracle, recognized by Oracle, that are not in use when you get Retail Pro installed. That is custom and other. And so we just threw our reports in custom, not really thinking about it much. Had we um, had we thought about it, we probably would have used the other folder. But um, but as a result, the other folder is open. And so a lot of times when I build reports for people, I'll put them into this this folder here. And the reason that it's it's good to use this one as opposed to making a custom name, which you can, it's very hard to do, but you can make a custom name in there. Uh, but it doesn't always stick. And that's, that's the issue, is that other and custom are actually typed into the, the Oracle tables in the Oracle database. They're recognized. So when we do a maintenance pack, they don't go away. That's that would be the issue that I would be worried about, right? So anyway, there, there's your basic report types. Uh, other being mostly, like I say, you can see here I've got uh, groups of reports in here that I've built for specific clients where they have a naming convention on the beginning of the report. And you can see little groups of reports here. These are all just written for, you know, in this case, SN is Space Needle. So, and there's a bunch of other ones in there, but that, that's what we do. We, we, we do that on this end, and this is what this webinar is about, has how to do that, right? So, all right, so back to, um, so I think we get the basic report types, right? Um, and that other is an empty folder that we sort of fill in for you. Um, so let's start with um, basically what you can change. We're gonna get very quickly into, um, into Crystal here, but uh, to start with, let's just say that we want to just copy a report, something simple, right? So if I go and find a report um, like department summary, okay, if I want to copy this report and I want to put another version of this report somewhere else and I want to edit the filter to my own liking, how would I go about that? Um, and I don't see any questions in the chat. I'm kind of watching here. So if you guys have questions, please feel free to to jump in and, and say something. Um, but when you copy a report, you have to make, you don't have to, but you should make a new version of the file, right? So you have to go find that file. And then you have to answer all these things that are lookups, right? So you're gonna have to know the answer to the lookup, right? For all these lookups, right? So um, the smart move here would be to right click this, select all, right click, and just export this out to Notepad, right? I.e write down all the answers before you attempt this little thing, right? So with those exported now, I have all the answers in my pocket. Okay, this report file name here is RPTS4 department summary, and it's in the summary folder, okay? So in, um, that wrong place, all right, nice. Um, in our, Retail Pro 9 reports folder, right? That's where you're gonna find all these folders, right? So in the summary folder, there should be an RPTS4 department summary, and there is, right? I could copy this. Now, if I don't choose to copy it, if I just register another version of this report against the same RPT, I could edit the filter and I could have two different, I could have that one RPT run two different ways. However, if you export it and then re-import it, those two reports will overwrite each other because they're using the same RPT. Therefore, the last one to import or last one to register wins, right? So if you wanna be able to export these and send them to another location, or simply export them so that you have an exported copy in case it blows up and you have to reinstall it and you wanna have a backup, then you really should copy the report. So copying the RPT file here and then putting it into whatever menu you want. Now, if you're making this version for yourself, I would put it in the other folder and, uh, and paste it in there. And then I probably would do something else to it. Like uh, I'm just gonna change the RPT to BHD I would put your initials on the beginning of it, and if you were running it for some purpose, uh, you might even scroll over here and, and add underscore, uh, add the reason that you're making this report, right, so that you have it in there. Optional, completely optional. Now, don't put spaces in there. Notice that none of the reports have spaces in them. None of the ones from Retail Pro, none of the ones from us. 
they don't put spaces in there. Spaces aren't a big problem until you export it and try and email it. At some point, if they do mess with you, I would recommend not putting spaces in the names. Don't, if you're copying these things and you want to be nice to yourself, don't change the core phrase that describes what base package the report's built on. I mean, you can, totally your option, right? But, but if I, as a technician, get involved later and I see that this is built on an S4, I know where that came from. Right, I can very quickly recreate that. I know where to go. I don't have to open it up and test it and find out what the query is and saves a lot of steps. Anyway, that's my basic on that. Anyway, so I put this in the other folder. It's here. Now I would either go to the other folder. If you already have another folder created, go to the other folder, be in the other folder. If you don't have another folder created, it's not a big deal. Uh, when you click register report, you can just change this to other right because it's a known value so um you know bhd department sample report right give it a name try not to hold down the cap lock key too long like some of us do um open up the the browse folder go find the other directory you may not be in the other folder you may be in the reports folder in which case you'll have to open up the other folder right and find that report that you just made, which is not that one there. Okay. Okay, there's our report that I just, just made, right? So I highlight it, I click open. It takes a second to open the report. You might float the mouse over the report icon down here. Sometimes that speeds it up. This is an old virtual machine, which is going to get replaced here pretty quickly. And it's taking longer to open this report than I would like. Click into the fields. And again, hover the mouse over the report icon. That tends to speed up that process. All right, so as this is opening, we see the types here. You've got date range, long date range. You got lookup right you got numeric range and or logic uh so the only ones that we have to mess with are the lookups right so the lookup here in this case says status so if you have not exported this data out you may or may not know that the the correct term to look for here is invoice status right now i've done it once or twice i would be fine without my cheat sheet but if you look for status, uh, and you got to back out that word none the first time. If you look for status, we're not going to find status. We're finding stations, right? So if I type in invoice S, it finds invoice status just fine. Boom, we got invoice status. Um, a trick which we can exploit more a little bit later is to type something that it doesn't recognize, and that's not working here, so we will just type invoice uh, T, invoice types, and find the invoice types. And mine jumps down funny. I don't know. This this one's weird. Again, though, clerk employee name is, in, is employee name, right? And if we looked in our cheat sheet, it would tell us that. Kit flag is kit flag. Most of these actually are pretty straightforward. They're not that hard. I don't know that we're going to go through the whole list. Um, it's pretty boring stuff here, right? So. But I, for me, it's about finding the shortest number of characters I can type to get to the value that I'm looking for, right? DCS is pretty easy. <laughs> Vendor code is not. For some reason, you have to get to the C in code, right? It doesn't find vendor code unless you both spell it right and get to the C in code for some reason. Um, anyway, down here, this one here, inventory, UDF3 is very similar to NV inventory UDF4, right? So if I type something that it doesn't understand, so that field indexes. What does it mean when it indexes? It means that it looks for the value when you type it in there. When I type in inventory, it finds things that say inventory, right? If I type an X, it doesn't know what to do with an X. So it opens the menu. I can just down arrow and accept the next one. You follow? So that's really handy for situations where you got five, six, seven, right? These are all basically the same, right? I can just go down and grab five. I can do the same thing again on 
on six here, and I could keep going if we were going to keep going. So this part here, you can absolutely just go in. I'm going to cancel this edit here. If you miss one and you try and save it, it'll tell you you're missing a lookup. Find the lookup, fill it in. Um, know that not all these are that easy to find. Are you sure you want to lose all changes? Yes. The hardest one for me to find was the active mark. That one actually humbled me a long time ago, right? Active items, you don't look for active, you look for the word is because it's a status. It's a, it's a way of being in Oracle, right? It's a condition that a field can be in in the Oracle ta tables. So active is is active. We didn't hit that one, but I wanted to point that one out because that's when super obnoxious. Now, once you finish registering it, like this one here is a report that's already been registered, but the point is to go over to the filter, right? The filter on the bottom left, not the filter over here. Don't click run, don't click uh, report filter here. Those are both transient. Those are both uh, only edited at runtime and do not have a memory, right? So if you're making a permanent edit to the filter, you're going to want to go to filters on the left here on the bottom left corner and the first time you go to filters for the day it'll take you to the elements list which is on the top right we can go to criteria once you go to criteria once today if you don't exit reports it will stay in that mode and you can flip back and forth to filter on various reports over here right so then in here we can click in here and we can say make a permanent edit. So that's set to last month, one month, one month ago. It always dynamically looks backwards at a specific date, right? Other things we could set for this kind of report here, the status field. Generally speaking, when I'm running a report, I only want to see normal transactions. I don't want to see voided ones, right? Also invoice type, right? I don't necessarily want to see a high security aborted sale. I only want to see a, a real transaction. Right now, there's also a tender type. I'm not sure why this was, what this purpose of this report really was. It looks like it's a GL report for uh, one of our clients. But they're they're looking for charge transactions only, right? But those are all things that you don't want to have to type in over and over again if you're running this every week or every month. And if you're scheduling it to run unattended, then you you can't, you won't be there to type it in, right? So, so there you go, right? Anyway, once you're done making your edits, hit click save and click OK, and then pop back into report mode, and it kicks you right out. And I'm not even sure that's the right one. Right, okay, so invoice type and status. You see, I set these here myself just a minute ago. These two were already in there, right? These these values were already present. But I added two things now that are now defaulting to that condition all the time. Now, can you, can you change these at runtime? Sure, absolutely, right? Now, if you're changing a dynamic date range, you either gotta use the dynamic date range, either you gotta say, okay, I'm gonna go two months, two months ago, or one month, two months ago, whatever or you've got to turn off the dynamic date range, flip it over to fixed period, in which case you can either use the drop down menus here, right? Or you can just type in here, uh, 010121, enter, right? T, enter, right? And that'll stick, right? So uh, real quick, let me make the mistake so that everybody gets this just in case you didn't. Um, if you're here, right, and you're on one month, one month ago, right there's what it started on and i type in 010121 hey it, it looks like it worked right t enter right looks like it's good right when i press enter again it reverts back to last month the dynamic date range supersedes overrides my edits right that's what happened there just want to make sure we're all on the same page if you're using a dynamic date range and you're making a manual modification at runtime change the dynamic value Put it to here and then use the calendars. People like the calendars. You can go forward, you can go backwards, you can click the month, you can go directly to any month you want. Same on the year, right? We all know that, right? I can go back to 1996 if I want to. Or just click OK and type in whatever you want, right? Now, when you type in a date, type in six whole numbers. So 
So month, day, year, press enter, and it will punctuate the date for you, right? It'll it'll put the slashes and the full year and all that in. You don't have to actually type it all out or type it all out. Some people like to type it all out and they're very fast and there's nothing wrong with that, right? Right, so that's like level one. That's basically, can I copy any report, make another version of it, give it my own name? Yes, you can. Edit my filter, yes, you can, right? So let's graduate to the next level, right? Okay, so in Crystal, so we just we just copied a report, right? We're good on that. So common changes, right? So you have to have Crystal reports installed if you if you're going to be playing with Crystal reports, right? Clearly, um, if we take my test report and I double click it, notice that first off. Uh, all the icons in here are crystal report icons, right? The, the little the little crystal report uh, icon like that right there, right? Is what these, it's because the association has been made. I installed crystal and it grabbed all the RPT. Um, side note that doc designs also have an RPT file extension and crystal will try and open them if you just double click a retail pro doc design and that gets a little awkward, right? So in here, um, we should blow this up a little so you guys can all see it first off. Maybe that's a little better probably for the webinar, I'm guessing. Um, okay, some, some basics. Now, if you're a Retail Pro user and you've been using Retail Pro a while, you probably at some point have had to go into the Doc Designer and like tweak the Doc Designer in some way uh, to make some small change that you needed to make, right? And there's some tricks in Doc Designer that translate right over or push right over to this crystal environment. So uh, let's start there. Um, so in the Doc Designer or in Crystal, if you click on a field and you hold the Shift key down, you can then click on other fields and highlight more than one field at a time. And if you uh, hold the Shift key, usually, and I don't know why it's not working for me, let's try another one, another one here. Okay, the Shift left arrow makes things smaller and the shift right arrow makes things bigger, right? Now, I can use the control key and left arrow or not. I think in Crystal, it doesn't care if you hold the control key. You can move them both if you left and right arrow. So shift resizes in both Doc Designer and in Crystal, and control would move left to right, up and down, right? Now, uh, you can also take more than one field here, like that. And I could right-click them in 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 crystal. The one you right-click on is your anchor. So if I say align top here, then I say size same height. You see that the quantity field now is the same height as the department fields, right? Now it's important that a column of numbers like this quantity column here, right? Hold the shift key, click on all of them. It's, a, it's important that they line up. So align left and adjust width. Why is it important, Jeff? Well, it's important so that if you choose to export this to Excel, that they line up, and they don't hop columns. If they're not the same size and they're not in alignment, sometimes, not all times, one of them will hop over to the next column, right, which is awkward. Then you got to play with it in Excel to get them to line up. Right. Okay. Um, so let's start talking about some of the other things in Crystal here. Um, aligning is my most common. Uh, you could add fields. Let's uh, let's talk about the, um, the the little panels we have here. This panel right up here called the Field Explorer, which I believe you can get to through a couple of different places here. Report. Um, where is it? I never used the one. I always use the shortcut, but there is a place to bring it in here on the top. Um, yeah, view field explorer. It's in the view menu, so you could click it. But if you see the icon there and you've got you've got the toolbar, I'm just going to say click the shortcut right there, and there's your field explorer. The other one is that's really important, and the newer versions have a slightly different icon, by the way, but it's still there. Um, is the report explorer now? I dock my report explorer on the right and my field explorer on the left. By default, I think they both dock on the right and they overwrite each other. I like to split them up, put them on either side. You can play around with that as, as you see fit, right? All right, still no questions in my chat. That's fine. Hopefully everybody's still awake. 
Um, all right, so the field explorer is terribly important because it gives you these, these things here, the database fields, the uh, formula fields, and the parameters. So let's talk about each of those real quick. Uh, the database fields, what are the database fields? That's the fields that the query brings in, right? So in this report, this is a department summary. So it's querying the data out of the database at the department level. So I do not see anything having to do with description one or two, right? I see departments, department names, the departments broken out individually, like subclass, class, department, there they are separate. Um, and then we have all the values, like those are descriptive, but these down here are values, the margin, margin percent, um, tag design is actually descriptive, allocation patterns are descriptive, but uh, extended price, that's a value, right? So these are all the fields that I have to play with using this query. And we'll talk more about the queries in a bit, but suffice to say there is a query that is being used to acquire the data, right? And that that query defines these fields, and these fields are all we can play with unless we change the query. So let's close that. Let's talk about formulas for a second. And we've got a few formulas in here. And formulas let you do math. That's like in, in Excel, right? You can do math in Excel. You can do math in Crystal, right? So uh, let's take a look at some of these formulas we got in here. Let's see what do we got. We got gross margin is really what we have. Uh, I don't know what that is. That's like a weird one. Okay, got it, don't really care, but this is a better one for us to look at right here. This one looks pretty damn complicated. I, I mean, you almost gotta be able to write programming code to write that. Not true, by the way, completely not true. When they wrote this, they didn't write all the hard parts. They just added the symbols they need to do the math, right? So what's going on here? Let's take a look. Um, margin amount at the subsidiary level is being divided by the price at the same level. And then the whole thing is being multiplied by 100 to make it be a margin percent, right? Okay, so could we do that same thing down here? So let's just see, could we do the same thing? All right, so in the report, the report fields, right? Um, we have a grouping here for subsidiary, right? And in that grouping, we have margin amount. Okay, so my cursor's down here and I double click margin amount, it puts it in there, right? I say divide that by, I hit a slash, the price field, boom. I just wrote that out, didn't I? Now, I didn't put a return character after this one, return characters don't matter, by the way, but I could, right? Now, I wanna multiply the whole phrase by 100, so I gotta say, okay, left bracket, okay, right bracket, multiply that by 100, right? Okay, there we go. Then they put the whole thing in another set of brackets, which I don't think really matters, neither here nor there. Okay, so what's the rest of that up there? I mean, that's just one little tiny paragraph. What's going on in the top? Well, we're dividing, right? We're dividing by price. What if an item in a given department was the only item sold in that department and it was in fact given away? was sold at a zero price. We would then be dividing by zero, right? That's ugly. That will cause the report to stop, kick an error, and uh, and you will not be happy, right? So what we need to do is we need to test if it's zero, right? So uh, up here, in fact, we see that it says price is not equal to zero, right? It says that right there, not equal to zero, right? So what's the other one? Well. The other one is testing for a null value, right? So if not is null, right, this field. So to write that out ourselves, it's just that. Just if not is null, it took me a long time to get that wrapped around my head. It's a command, it's a status in Oracle. It's not two words. I want to put a space there. Don't do it. Put your little bracket, right? Double click the field you're, you're dividing by, boom. Okay, you got. You got on the left side, we got one, two, three left brackets. That means you got to have three three right brackets. We got one, so there's two and there's three, right? Space and bracket again, double click field again, not equal to zero, close your bracket, right? 
there you go. I just repeated that the same thing. Not exactly the same, but very close. Now, we then put in the word then. So if these things here are, are not true, then you can go ahead and do the math. And if, if they are true and you skip, skip the math, then we would go to the else statement and we'd have to say, look, just make it zero, right? So let's do this. Let's see if I'm if I'm right here, right? Let's delete all that and let's hit this little X2. The X2 is a very handy function in, in formula writing. It tells you whether you screwed up or not, right? So no errors found. Good. Okay, let's 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 pull a bracket out. Okay, I'm just gonna backspace that little bracket out. We're gonna click X2 and see if it catches us. Missing right bracket which unfortunately when it says missing right bracket doesn't tell you where, right? But you know you're missing a right bracket. I mean, it's easier if I can't find it, sometimes just wipe the whole thing and write it fresh because that, that really would only take me like a minute, less than a minute to write that from scratch, right? I was going through it pretty slow, but you can see that in the formula area, mostly you're double clicking things and saying divide by this, multiply by that. You're not actually typing all that stuff out, right? Now, uh, a nice trick, if I wanted to take this here and turn it into the grand total margin percent, right? So um, let's just save, I guess, and we'll click on the grand total one. How does that one differ from this one? Well, in every phrase here, there's a, a field. So that's, that's the procedure. That's the field. That's the procedure. That's the level. So, so this piece right here from the from the comma over, right, defines the level that the summary is taking place at, right? So, if I wanted to, to to copy this, and I could, so I could take this and I could say duplicate this, and I could say, okay, this is our 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 grand total version, right? All I would need to do to make that drop to the grand total is get rid of the level just delete that piece out. Just delete out the little squiggly bracket to the comma in all four spots. All right, so let's see. Did I, did I screw that up? Let's try it here. X2, no errors found. Now, I'm guessing that they wrote it like this. Let's find out here. Save, and let's click on the G grand total yeah see so that one now looks the same as mine right I, they got an, i got an extra line at the top but and i put the uh the else zero on the same line but other than that same thing right mm, we could do other things too um i'm just going to delete this we really don't need this one here right i'm just going to press the delete key on the keyboard and it goes away um, and we're probably good on this for the moment. All right, so so we got data fields, we got formulas, we got parameters, right? So parameters, what's a parameter? A parameter is a filter field, right? So the parameters are going to show up in here if that's turned on in your in reports, right? So quick side note here in reports, on the main menu, if you go to options, workstation preferences, under appearance and under printing, you've got to make some changes to the default. By default, it says none. By default, it does not show what you filter by in reports. So you've got to turn that on to first to last versus very popular. Also, by default, under printing, it does not let you print a range. I could not print page 400 of 400. I could either print the whole thing or export it to, to PDF and do it in Adobe, right? So you're going to want to check this off. And under appearance, you're going to want to say probably first page and save those settings. Now, if you do that and you save first page, then then whatever you filter for when you run this, right, will show up here in the in the uh, in this this little filter criteria header. And down here, there's another version of that in the footer, right? So if you choose the last page, it's going to show up in in that one, right? These are connected. Don't delete these. You can suppress them if you don't want to see them. Just suppress them. If you delete them, what Retail Pro has done, they've done some programmatic, programmatically like attached values, and if you delete them, it will be angry with you and you will not be successful. So, FYI. 
right? Okay, so on these, well, okay, so let's just take, let's combine this two, two concepts here, right? So these are meant to be used over here, right? So if you're here in this report and you're running, say, that report, which is basically this report right here, right here, right? So if I click run, these parameters show up here. That's that's where they show up, right? That's how we would put them in. So here's where they're meant to be used. We're not doing a lot with them in the report, right? But what if I wanted to take, um, what if I want to take that right there? And what we should do is we should, um, let's close this. Yes, no, don't care. Um, let's pop over here and actually be on this one here. All right, let's open this one up. And what I want to do is do two things here. So uh, I want to start by um, running this, previewing it. So let's let's click this preview. There's a preview to HTML and there's a preview for just print preview. I like the print preview. Um, there are three things. Oh, that's weird. Let's see if we can get the filter to come up right. They, yeah, it's a different version of Crystal, whatever. All right, so let's try it again. See, a minute ago I had four slots. Now we got all of them. If it's not saved natively in this version of Crystal, just move like the logo and move it back and save, right? Just do something and save. And then it'll it'll own this report and you'll see all the parameters like that. Okay. There are three things you if you're gonna preview in here, there are three things you have to answer if they are present. We might get lucky and this one might have all three. Um so the top one there that says uh the extended cost basically, right? Um that's tied to security. So if your security group allows you to see cost and you would be able to see cost, right? So that's not gonna pop up in the report. You're not gonna answer that in, in real life. That's that's under the hood, right? That's pay no attention to this man behind the curtain, the invisible stuff. Uh, destination subsidiary, pretty much they all have that. You have to say one or 20, whatever your, your, your subsidiary is. Most of us are one, like all of us are one except for a few exceptions. And if you have an employee ID, you got to answer that one. Now, what if I don't answer that one? And I click OK. It says, please enter a value. It puts me back in that field, right? So if you have the employee ID and you probably have the destination subsidiary and you have a, uh, that, that top one, that cost one, you'll have to answer them. It will stop you and not let you continue if you do not answer them, right? OK. Now, you do not have to put anything else in, but you kind of do. So. If I clicked OK, it would run, and it, that would be fine because I'm on a sandbox and I don't have enough data to worry about, so we wouldn't care. But you guys have enough data to worry about. Most everybody out there has years of data. And if you just click OK right now, you're going to run it wide open on all your history. And that's going to take longer than you want to wait for, probably, right? So let's talk about how to put a date field into a crystal. We're not going to get into a lot of these other fields because that would take us down some deep rabbit holes. but but the date is pretty important. I think when you're playing with, with the crystal reports, you gotta know how to put a date in. And to put a date in is pretty easy. Uh, what do we got here? We don't really need that anymore. We've already talked about that. So let's just use this notepad here. So yeah, what you have to do is you have to do, you have to do include or exclude comma date date so you got to put the dates in quotes and you got to say whether it's included or excluded and you got to separate everything by comma how does that look okay include and exclude is zero or one so i'm going to say include right comma single quote not double quotes a date okay let's say 01 slash um 01 slash 2020 all right close my date open a new one and we could do three now, usually it renders them with a zero. You don't have to type the zero in, by the way. So I'm going to say 30 slash 2021, right? So that right there says include 
from this day to that day, right? That's what that says. Let's see if it works. So let's just copy that and bring that back into here and drop that in here. And now let's, uh, I'm going to scroll down and click OK. I could have just pressed Enter. The, the OK is the Enter button, by the way. Now, it's now, since the first time I previewed this, it's now wanting to connect to the database. The database name, just so we're all uh, clear on this, is R Pro ODS. There are two O's in there, and I did uppers and lowers to separate those to make sure you see that this R Pro ODS, right? That's the service, right? So that's what we're connecting to, right? Our username, right? Our user is uh, report user. And the password for that is report all lowercase, okay? So over here, RPRO ODS, good. Report user, good. Okay, R-E-P-O-R-T. Finish. Okay, just ran the report, didn't it? All right, so the reason I wanted to run this like that is so we could play around with it a little bit, right? All right, so now back here, what if I were to take the short date range and drop this, drop that in up here, right? There's a short date range. Okay, let's hit save on that. And let's go back to preview. And there it is, right? So let's see, can we zoom in on that so we can see that? Like, Now that's exactly the way I typed it into Notepad, isn't it? So it renders exactly the same way, right? Now, what if I needed to print that, that date range? What if I wanted to print that date range right there? I would have to pull or parse this date out of this field, right? All right, so I'm going to go back to formulas for a second, and we're going to say right-click new. We're going to call this uh, date range. Now, there's no rules here. A lot of people put a little F in front of these, and what that does is alphabetically puts them all in the same place in, the, in that report menu or up, up higher. So when you want to grab it, you know where to look. It's a good practice. I'm going to leave it. You could just put in date range. You could use a space. I don't. All right, so there's a couple of commands I want to share with you real quick. So in the um, report fields, right, here's all the fields that are in the report. We scroll down, there's our, there's our date ranges, right? Now, um, in here, if I click right there, Right, you follow where we're going here? So, so one, one, two, three, fourth, this is the, technically the fourth character, right? Uh, that really doesn't show very well, does it? Because they're different sizes, but you get where I'm going, right? If we're on the left-hand side and I say right arrow one, let's do it with a shift key on, one, two, three, four, right? That's the fourth character in, right? And I want to grab that, 10 characters, right? So starting from right here, we got basically one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten 10 characters, right? Um, so what I could say is, I could say in here, mid, that means I'm going to pull out a middle section, bracket, double click the field, put my comma starting point four, comma length 10, close bracket. That grabs that date, and I could now put an ampersand in there and say add to that a quote. Now I got to put quotes around things if I'm adding them. A little hyphen. Finish my quote and put another ampersand in there. Type in uh, mid bracket this field here. Now let's see how far do I got to go. Let's see. So so uh, that's 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 uh. That's four, right? Five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. So the 17th character starts the next one. You follow? So I could say mid, and you know, probably since spaces don't matter, we should put spaces in here. You don't have to. 
it would have worked fine without them. But for us human beings, we're going to like it better if it shows like that, right? If we're editing in here later. So comma 17, comma 10, close bracket, right? So let's see what that does. So let's first off test it, make sure I didn't screw up. I didn't screw up, so save and close. Take that and drop that right in here and see how that compares to the one right below it, right? Always a good idea to save before you preview. But it did exactly what I wanted, what I asked it to do, didn't it? It put the date in with a, with a simple hyphen, right? Uh, if I go back to that and say, look, I like it, but I want a little more space. I'm going to put a space around the um, hyphen, right? Save and close and pop back over to our preview. And it now shows with little spaces. Does that make sense? Everybody good on that? Any questions? No questions? That's exciting. All right. Uh, you guys still awake? Hopefully you're still awake. Um, and, you know, minimize the drool coming out of the mouth. I'm just going to say. This is pretty boring stuff. I get it. But it's quite cool, too. So back over here, um, let's take a different field. Let's toy around with a different field here. Let's say that now in the, in the data fields, they were nice. They gave us the DCS code, and they gave us the department and the class and the subclass. But let's say there, are, in fact, are a lot of reports that don't give you these three here. They just give you this here. But I want to break it out myself. Okay. So let's toy around with that concept for a quick second in the land of formulas. So if I was going to build the department code, I'm going to say new uh, department code, right? And the department code is, in fact, the left, right? So I'm going to say left, if I could spell left today, left bracket, right? And that is a that's in the R Pro data fields, right? So I'm just going to go grab it right out of there. DCS code, double click, there it is, comma, three characters, close it. So that would pull the first three characters of the DCS nine-digit field, right? If I wanted the if I wanted the uh, uh, if I wanted the subclass, right? I would say subclass. Give it a good name, right? Always. And that would be right, right? Everybody saw that one coming, hopefully, right? DCS code, comma three. And hopefully everybody knows how to get the subclass. It would be a mid statement, and it would say mid DCS code, start on the fourth character, go three characters, right? I don't think we have to build that one to know how to build that one. We just did two of those, right? So. So you can parse fields out of there. Um, there's other things you can do, like there's a ton of stuff on the, online you can search. Um, the split command is very nice if you want to split a field on uh, on uh, different values, uh, like commas, for instance. Um, all right, back to, to work here. With the, we can go pretty far down these rabbit holes, can't we? Um, all right, so uh, back in some basics. So, so common changes. We talked about the basic structure of what we have available and how to do a basic formula, we, uh, which we kind of skipped ahead on the formula thing there maybe a little bit, but let's talk about layout sort. So in, in version eight, layout and sort was was basically, the layout was just what you put in, whatever we dragged over and put in here, right? The sort was the drill down. Now, not everybody gets that sort wasn't necessarily alphabetizing in version eight, and it's not alphabetizing here, but it can, right? So um, the sort in 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 in, in um, crystal it's called grouping, right? Is up here at the top. The group expert, and you can access it again, I think, through one of these things too. I never do, by the way. It's in here though. I know I've seen it. Anyway, um, the group has a little icon up here. This one looks like an equal sign, and it's right there. And if I click open the group, that shows me uh, the drill down, right? So right now. Our level of detail is the DCS code. That's what the query is written at, right? So, so we are pulling data at the DCS level. So the detail band is already at the DCS level. I don't need to make a grouping for department code. The full department code is the level of detail. So in other words, the detail band here, right, as opposed to this footer, right? You see that footer band and the header band. That's group level one, right? That's the subsidiary. This is the full DCS, but what if I want to subtotal by department? Okay, I would need to add a, a level, and it would be 
the department, right? Since they gave us a native one and we didn't have to save my formulas. And I would want that to be my second level. So company first, department next, right? Okay. That inserts a new header and footer set here, right? Now, I don't know that I need the, the header. The header is an announcement. So if we go back to preview here, it's now announcing, right? So it announces APL and it shows APL kids and APL men's and APL women's. And then it does right here, there's a, there's a footer that you can't see because we haven't populated it. But there's a footer here that would be used to subtotal that. You know, generally speaking, since APL is in the full code, I don't really need to announce it. Uh, so I'm going to just right click and suppress that. You can do some cool things with that header, by the way. But in this case, I don't really need it. I could take this APL that's printing here and drag it down to that. But honestly, I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to put department in there. Um, because then it'll say group footer two, and I won't know what group footer two is. And I want to know that it's the department. It just feels better if I put the native value department in there, right? All right, so if, then if I need to make this be a subtotal, I need to insert some values that are subtotals, right? So this is the detail band. When you're inserting summaries, you always do it from the detail band. Uh, there's a couple of ways to do it. We'll look at the, the way I do it, and we'll look at the other way to do it too. Um, but if I want to know the quantity, then what I would do is right-click the quantity and insert the summary up to the band that I want, in this case, the um, department level. And it would insert that summary for me. And I would do the same thing. Now, instead of doing that with the original price, I'm going to do it the other way so we have an example of how that works. I could go up here and say insert a summary. And then I've got to pick what, what the field is, original price. I've got to pick how I'm doing it, summing it. And then I've got to pick the location that I'm putting it to. So you see I had to touch all three of those drop-down menus. Uh, which makes you about twice as likely to make a mistake more than, than doing it the other way. So let's try it again the way I did it. I right-clicked here and I said insert summary. Now, it already knows that it's price. It already knows that it's a summary. All I got to say is where to put it. You follow? That's a lot easier in my opinion. All right, so um, insert summary the level of our choosing insert summary the level of our choosing right boom now you know trick question for everybody can we insert the margin percent can we just right click that insert that as a summary to this level here and of course the trick answer is no you can't add margin percents together you have to recalculate the margin percent, right? We all knew that. We could all see that one coming, I'm hoping. All right, so how would we do that? Well, we would, we would pop up here. We would go find one of these that's already done, preferably, right? So I'm gonna right click and say duplicate that. And I'm gonna rename it. I don't want it to be called, now I usually put my level, like subsidiary here is the level. I usually put that at the um, at the end so I don't have to backspace through the whole thing, but following their naming convention, right, we just created a new version of that. Pressing enter on it again, it opens it up. Now in here in the report section, we go find that new level. Here's here's my new level, right? Here's my department level. So I'm gonna pop down there and just double click this so I can see how the department level expresses. I'm gonna control C that and copy it and get rid of this extra line, don't need it. Then I'm gonna find the level in each of these things. And I'm just gonna control Victor, pay, paste in the level that I want over the top. Like I don't wanna really wanna rethink the logic here. I don't wanna do the math again. Like I just changed the level and we're good, right? And then we just drop that in and we now have the whole thing now the, the there's some formatting issues here right uh font stuff like that so i've got uh right click here select all fields i'll right click again align these to the top right click again make them the same height right click again go to format objects 
check the font. So it doesn't know whether it's, it knows it's eight, but it doesn't know whether it's bold or regular. So we'll make them all bold. And we will try this out and see if it, wor it works, right? Uh, let's back away from that a little bit because damn, that's hard to see. Um, and so, all right, so we've got the, the name thing going crazy. Let's clean that up so it makes more sense to the report. All right, all these fields are a little aggressive, right? So I'm just gonna chop this down. I think we know what MRG percent sign means, right? So I don't think we need the, the amount of space being devoted to that that we're getting, right? So I'm using the shift key. Now I'm using the shift left arrow and it's not working so well. That's great, love that when that happens. Okay, so I'm gonna use the mouse and just override that. And then I'm gonna control right arrow that over, right? In here, I think we all know it's an amount, okay? We don't really need coaching to know that that is in fact an amount, right? So I'm gonna go ahead and make that a little smaller and mine's jamming up again. So I'm just gonna override it and use the mouse and pull that over, right? So I'm control right arrowing. So why control, why not just take the mouse and move it over, right? What's the deal with the whole arrowing around all the time? One dimensional movement, right? And another, another trick here, watch. We could take this field here, make this shorter, right? Move it over, get it where we want it, roughly. Okay, that's close enough. Uh, that's gonna have to be it. Hold down the shift key, grab the other elements, right? Right click this, align left, adjust width, boom, boom. Right, so whichever way works for you. Um, I'm in the habit of usually going like this and then making that smaller and then, uh, then using my right arrow to slide them over so that they stay even and perfect in alignment and I don't have to realign those, right? If it's taking too long, maybe, you know, do it how what works for you, right? And uh, I don't know that I need um, the return character that's in there. Um, I'm not even sure I need price, but I guess I'll leave it, right? Okay, so all right, one more painful move and we'll be good, right? Um, I'm I'm pretty sure we know it was sold. So I'm gonna drop the word sold. And slide these over and make them a little smaller. All right, so now we can play with this name thing here. Now, we have given this thing enough room now that if it cuts off, I don't care, okay? So highlighting both of these, I'm now gonna make this be a lot bigger so we can see the whole thing, right? Now, there still is the chance that, you know, if it was a big department, they could be big getting cut off, right? I'm gonna right click this and look at the format fields option and on the common tab you see this this can grow we're going to turn that can grow off the other one that's very important is to suppress if duplicated that's non-repeat mode for those who care uh, so i'm going to make sure that both those are off though so what that means is that it's going to go this full length and if there's more it's just going to cut off right so let's save it and take a quick peek at that and that's better for me, right? So if we back up now and take a look, we see um, like, uh, well, let's look at men's. Men's is prettier, right? So men's, it starts in with men's, does all the departments, then subtotals for men's there. The quantity is too big. So maybe we need to fix the quantity field a little bit. Let's pop back over and let's take a little bit back from our department name maybe and, and make sure quantity has a little more to play with. Right, so so control left arrow, shift right arrow, or grab the mouse if it's being uncooperative. That's better, right? 
Now, the other thing I would do is we're human beings, like break this up. So when we do a subtotal here by department, like give yourself a breath of space, right? Just like say, look, hey, this is a subtotal, right? And and pause and then start the next category, right? Little things like that really go a long way to making things easier to read. Now, what's up with the 30.00 here? Well, we inserted that subtotal, right? And by default, all subtotals have decimal value in crystal. So if you want to not have decimal value, you got to go turn that off. Now, in that case, you know, we actually have a labor category in this set of data that actually has a, a decimal value, so probably should have left it turned on, but I'm not sure I care. You know, when, when you have decimal values at the end of the day, you, you take the 0.3 and the 0.7 and the 0.6 and the 0.5, and you add them all together, and there's some fractional difference at the very end, and that just that last bit gets rounded to either up or down, right? So the summary actually includes all the little pieces. It's just it's cutting off the last fragment. I'm not sure I care. It would depend on data and how important it is, right? Our font sizes are wrong. My font sizes are inserted at eight. These are obviously nine or ten. Not sure. But you'd, we would want to fix that if we were going to keep this, right? They're at nine, right? They should all be at nine or they should all be at eight, right? One or the other. Pick one. Roll with it, right? All right, um, back to our little uh, thing here. So so some common changes, some layouts and sorting. Um, by the way, um, the rules in V8 and V9 are exactly the same. What I mean is in the grouping, if I add something in here, I need to have it in my layout. If I if I put something in my layout that's that's another element, then I need to have it in my grouping. Does that make sense to everybody? Probably not, okay. So if I, uh, let's see here, if in my department level that's grouping only by department, if I choose to print a class or a subclass, so if I added this right here and I added this right here, which class and which subclass would it print? A trick question. It would print the first one it finds. It would fill its layout requirements. And that would be like lying to yourself, right? It's going to print them, right? It's going to print them for sure. Every time, going to print them. No question about that. Um, so here, right, so why is it printing T and TAN for the men's section? because it happens to be the last one in the list, right? That's the one that was active in memory when 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 we got to that next level and it had to print something. But but this this number here, this total is not about this and this. It's only about that. Does that make sense to everybody? So, uh if you have a level you want to print like that, it needs to be you need to be drilling to that level and you need to put them at the right level, right? Uh, that level is this level here. This level is natively that level all the time. It's the full DCS code, department class and subclass. So I would only want to print those values at that level. I could have a grouping by class, right? And then in that case, I could have another insert between these, and I could print the department and the class and subtotal by class if I want to. That's just a choice. We just did that for department. I don't think we need to do it again for uh, for class. I do have a question. Uh, thank you for asking the question, by the way. Uh, I have to drop off here. Okay, gotcha. No problem. Thank you very much, Jim. Uh, very nice. The people are courteous too when they're when they're jumping out. So, um, okay. All right. So, um, ranking. Let's talk about ranking. What if I wanted to rank this stuff? So, there's two different levels of ranking here. There is the native detail band, and then there's the groupings above it. But let's say I want to rank both of them. Okay, right? Um, so inside this level here, let's say I'm ranking it by by this extended price, right? 
there is this little A to Z thing here, record sort expert, right? And the record sort expert is going to let me then add a level. So if I add at the bottom here, extended price, right? And I could say descending, that'll rank these department codes inside this subtotal. What if I want to rank the subtotal level too though, right? So that is the little icon just to the left. So there's a grouping shortcut, there's a, a group sorting element, then there's just a regular record sorting element, right? So the group sorting element works a little bit different on the tab that is the level you're toying with, the department one. You then have to pick like what you're doing and what field you're doing it on. So I'm going to say on the price field, use top N, where N is the top five, the top 10. Just do it for everything. Like if I pick 9999, okay, that's, that's more departments than I have. Right, it's going to rank them all. Okay, so let's try this. Let's click OK. Let's click Save, and let's pop over here and take a look. So on the first page here, if we go back to the first page, it starts with men's. Okay, men's is the number one department, right? And women's is the next department. Now notice that my my women's apparel dress looks like it's wrapping here, right? I'm not fond of wrapping. So I could either right click this and I could say um, format um, and take off the can grow, right? And maybe I want to do that, but maybe I also just want to go ahead and reduce the size of this field a little bit, move it over and give it the room it needs to print the thing correctly, right? Like I'd rather have it cut off than wrap, but I, I really would like to print the whole thing all the time, right? So now it should be not wrapping that women's department, which is easier, cleaner, prettier little blocks of data, right? So men's, women's, home, in that order, and within men's, right? Then we have we have the the the, the full departments. The apparel pants is number one. Apparel tees is number two. This is all fake data. You guys realize that this is sandbox data. It's crap. Don't try to evaluate the data. It's a mess. I would probably reduce the font sizes too. These font sizes are big. I would drop these down. I like portrait, but I would probably drop to seven pitch because I'm probably going to export this to Excel anyway, right? So I know everybody does. Um, to, to quickly modify this though, we could right click here. We could, we could select all objects, right? We could, um, okay, now, when, now I can't align these to the right because when I selected all objects, I, I picked up a graphic the line here at the bottom, right? So I drop the line, I do a shift, click on the line, that drops the line, now I can align top, I can adjust the height, I can now move the line, I can now right click before I move the line and change my font, right? So I can take these to seven if I want to. Seven is not in the drop down menu, but if you wanna pick it, it ain't, it's not gonna stop you. And for me, um, honestly, I need glasses to see eight or seven. It really doesn't matter. But just to show you what I mean here, if we select all objects, we could quickly modify this whole report, right? Format objects, font, seven. Select all objects, format, font, seven. I haven't done the grand total or the subsidiary total, but I, think you, I don't think I need to do that for you guys to get that it's the same as the other two, I've, three I've done, right? So it's just that fast, I made everything fit. Now, also, I'm not fond of header records, and this, this subsidiary right here, that's a header record, right? If you only have one subsidiary, you don't need to announce that you're in that subsidiary, right? If you have multiple subsidiaries, you probably want to actually put the subsidiary number on the left-hand margin so that you have a guide as to what part of the report you're in. Because if you have a long report that has multiple subsidiaries, you're going to want to just put that data at an accessible level, right? All right, everybody good with what I've done here? Right, I've got their basic department code summarized now by department with the grand totals, and I've ranked the whole thing, which is completely optional, right? So, all right, 
Um, right. Filters versus record select. That's an excellent point right there that we should talk about briefly. Right. So, um, so let's see. What do we got to record select with here? Anything at all? Don't see much here to play with, but all right. Um, a record select is when you want to um, filter inside Crystal for something that's not natively filtered by, right? So um, if I wanted to, for instance, uh, only show items that sold more than one, why would I want to do that? That's weird. But okay, fine. Let's just pick something, right? If I highlight the quantity field here and I bump to the top where it says report select expert, there's record and group, right? So I'm going to say record. And since I was on the quantity field, I don't have to select one. Now I'm going to start over again and, and not be on the quantity field and do the same thing so we can see the difference. Right, so now it's asking me what field, right? I'd have to pick quantity first, right? But if you're on the field, when you click that, you can save that step. Then you could say is equal to, is not equal to, is one of, is not one of, is less than, is less than, or equal to, ooh, greater than. So there's a whole bunch of different default values. We're gonna say greater than one. Click OK, don't trust it, always go back and click on it and see, see the SQL has been created. It's a wise choice, by the way. Save, click on preview, and it wants to use the save data, refresh the data, it doesn't really matter, use save data is fine. Now this would have changed the numbers, right? So everything that had a one only has now been dropped Right, so the grand total has changed and the, the subtotals on everything has been changed. And I can go, we could go look at this total here at the bottom just to, for, um, right, a little too far. All right, well, all right, so the totals are big and they're blowing up, but the total here for a grand total is 2,007,638, right? Report, select, record, delete, OK, preview, view save data. So it just changed a little bit there, didn't it? Still 2,700,000, but I think it was 638, now it's 645, right? So most of my data is not ones because it's sandbox. And when I need to go test something, I go sell 1,000 of these or 1,000 of those, right? So my data is not a good example of that, but but a record select, very powerful tool. Um, there's a great many times when I need to record select something to find out something, you know what I mean? Uh, you can combine that with a formula. For instance, uh, a lot of times people want to know whether a field's populated. Uh, what you can do there is, what I've done anyway, is in the formula fields, let's say it's uh, description two or something, I don't know. No, I can't do description two. This is a department report. Uh, all right, let's just say new test. What do we got here to play with? Well, normally I would do this with an auxiliary field or a, or a, a secondary field of some kind, right? Because um, I want to find out if it's populated, right? So we'll just say tax code for now. Uh, what I would do is do a length, right? And there's just a ton of stuff you can find on the internet, right? So I could say length, uh, boom, like that, right? That's just going to find out the length of that field, right? Which is either going to be zero or it's going to be, or it's going to have a value, right? And then um, if you save that, there's an error in the formula. Really? A string is required for your nice. Okay. That could happen. So I picked a numeric field, right? Fair enough. So I can just add two text and put another bracket in there, right? So I just changed the numeric field to a text field. By the way, you can you can change things to numeric as well. You can also te test for numeric. Is numeric is a value? That's a great one, by the way. Um, so did that work? No problems here now, right? So length 
turn this into text and measure the length, right? Boom. Then turn around and go right up to here and say, select expert, record select, and then go find the formula you just created, right? There's my test formula, right? So I could say, uh, is greater than zero, right? So if I'm looking for only things that have a certain value, and I don't know if I trust that actually. I don't know if it, yeah, it did, it worked, right? So, so it's got a, a formula now being measured against zero, right? So if I'm looking to only have things that are that have been marked for clearance, and there's three different marks I use for clearance, I could measure the length of the clearance field, and then I could sort it by that, and I could separate those out and see what my report's going to hold, right? So anyway, that's just a nice trick, by the way, to, to wrap your head around. I'm going to delete that. Probably not a very useful one for this report. Um, all right, so hopefully everybody's still awake somewhat. Um, all right, so I think we've got all of that. Um, and then we need to bump on, move on to this uh, report scheduling, which we can do here in a second. Um, I just want to uh, also point out that this report here has a query, by the way. So on the database here, if I pop up here and say show query, it's going to show me the query. Now, I've Usually it makes me log in, but I'm, I've already logged in. We already it looks like we did that a minute ago when we when we uh, did the preview. Um, so our 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 user account is report user. So that's the first thing it's showing. And I don't think I can blow this up, can I? Can I? Let's try. It. What if I do this here? Copy this. Drop it into here, maybe. So that's what it's what it's displaying as, right? Um, all right, so you see it says report user here. That's just us. This is the package that that's being pulled from, and this is the procedure inside the package. Okay, so why is that useful to me? Like what, well, how does that matter, right? Like, what do I care about that? Um, minimize that, close this. Um, let's, let's, let's do something you know, we probably shouldn't do actually, but well, we won't save it, right? All right, so database, set database location. Okay, I'm using an S4. We've already established this is an S4 report and it is in fact using an S4 query, right? And that query is part of the report summary package, right? Down here, Opera ODS is the database. I've got various versions because I've connected to a plethora of them. Don't worry about that. Just take the Opera ODS, that's the top one. If you have more than one, you probably won't. Find report user, that's us. Open that up. Then in here, you can find all the different queries that might be in there. I have more than you will. I have far more than you will because I hack around with these. So we're looking for report summary. There's report summary, right? Now, what if I were to change this from an S4 to, say, an S8? And there's S8 right there. Now, S8 is an item level summary, right? So I would highlight the, the, the procedure that it's on. Then I would highlight the new procedure I want to give it. And then I could click Update and fill in my subsidiary number, the required fields, right? It's got to have the employee. And then it spins here for a minute and does its little dance. If there are fields it doesn't recognize, like DCS name, it pops up and says, hey, I don't know what this is. Now, I could map this if I had a full DCS name over here, but I don't. But I do have D name, C name, and S name, so I'm not going to lose anything. I could re-add them backwards, so I'm not going to map them to anything. I'm just going to click OK, let that field drop out of the report. And then I'm going to click Close. Now, how did that affect this report? Uh, first off, the the detail level, which was DCS code, is now item. We dropped our name. I could put that back, right, if I wanted to. Um, but look at the fields I picked up over here. So now I'm now at the item level. So now I have all the UDF fields. I have all the depart description fields for the item level, right? 
So if I wanted to build a report around UDF3, if that's my clearance mark, I could now group by UDF3. You follow? So I have all the item fields. So if I was going to make this report be the same as it was, I would now need a new grouping. I would need a new grouping for the DCS code, right? That's what this report was about before. There's your DCS code, right? So I'd have to add that level of grouping and suppress, and I would suppress the detail band. Don't need the detail band if we're gonna do the same thing we were doing, right? Now, these now I, I cannot, I cannot just drag these down like I drag that down, right? This I would have to insert the summary at, right? To level three. I'll do I'll do a couple. I don't want to bore you guys too much. And I would have to recalculate the margin. I think we all know that, right? Uh, and of course, when you insert them, they automatically turn into, um, you know, they automatically go bold. So we would want to set these to like our chosen font and our type of font, regular, right? So, um, and if we were going to continue and actually make this work correctly, right, we would have to then go up and find the um, the group sorting element because we group sorted those, right? So we would want to say top N, right, 9999 or something, right, on the price field. Well, we'll do original price because I didn't summarize the price field yet. Uh, save that. Yeah, I was getting an invalid argument. It won't hurt anything, by the way. You could clean it out probably, but but it's doing the same thing it was. It just doesn't have all the fields because I didn't choose to put them all in yet, right? So uh, you can swap reports around on different packages is what I'm kind of getting to here. You know what I mean? And you can make them. Yeah, let's go back to the uh, first page. That's what I was looking for, the men's section, right? That's the good section to look at. So anyway, you see what I mean. Um, journals and item level summaries have the most detail. Journal has more detail, by the way, because it's it's all the way down to the position on the receipt. Um, so if you're building a report and you don't have the fields you need, you might swap over to a, a journal package or a, a base uh, S8 item summary, right? How do I know it's an S8? Like if, I, if I'm not on the webinar and, and Jeff said, hey, move to that one, how do I know which one to go to, right? Just go look at an item summary, right? They'll just tell you that's an S8 right there, S8 item summary, right? It's right there in the file name. Not rocket science here. So anyway, um, I just wanted to bring that level in. If you want to actually go to that level and and do things, you'll you'll it'll require another piece of software, PLSQL Developer, for instance. Uh, course the password is the same it's still report user report to get in right and we're not going to do anything in here because this would this is deep down the rabbit hole shall we say right but there they are there's all the packages and if I take a a basic uh, summary for instance and we open it up just so we can look at it so there's your basic report summary right if I right click this and choose to edit it you see inside it okay that's that's the that's the package right there these are the procedures inside it right so there's an S4, right? There's an S8, and there's the code that goes into making up the S8. Not that we're gonna, we're not gonna get into any of that today. That's above and beyond. But if we need to add a field, then I have added fields just yesterday for some people on on queries. This is where you'd have to do it. To add a field, you'd have to know how to add it into SQL. If that's something we need to look at in a limited basis, we could. If somebody really needed to see that, I don't know that anybody really does. You know. So fair enough. Um, I'm going to close that. Don't see any other questions on that. So let's talk about scheduling real quick. Um, OK, if you're going to schedule it, you have to register it into reports, right? So let's take that report that we had earlier that um, this one here that, that, that we had all dialed in, right? So this one here. It has a, a date range, it has a, a filter criteria on the top, it has filter criteria at the bottom. It can run unattended, you follow? 
like I, there's nothing. I just click run and okay, and it runs for the period I need to, the way I need to, right? That's step one. Got to have a report. It's got to be fully set up, edited, the filter, be able to run unattended, right? Okay. Step two is then uh, to get a little script that will run this report and set it up to run that report. So I have one of these, by the way, already written, and it is right, right there. In fact, perfect. That'll work right there. So um, now what I can do, if you guys want, this is an example of a, of, of a script. Do you guys want this? Should I drop this in the, in the, in the little uh, share? I mean, would you use it? Here, I'll drop it in there. Or I guess I have to click choose file or something. All right. This PC. Oh, I see, I see. This is in a bad place, isn't it? All right, fine. We will get a different one. All right. So I'm going to drop one in called weekly. That's one that I used use for like a weekly reports batch. Wow, really doesn't like that, does it? So it's really not letting me put that batch file in there. Um, if you guys really want it, let me know. I can make it be a different file type, but I'm not going to waste a lot of time on it since nobody seems to be overly concerned about that. I'm not seeing anything in the chat, right? So let's just go take a look at that and see um, what's going on with that. All right, so now um, on your side, I'm going to strongly recommend that you give yourself some organization. What I usually do is I put a batches folder in my reports section, and then I drop in there a uh, a script. So if I'm going to do a weekly reports, I would call it weekly. If I'm going to do it monthly, I would call it monthly or EOM end of month. And it's a batch file, by the way, and I can get this to you. We could email it to you as a text file and you could change it to a batch file, BAT. And here, if we take a look at it, it's nice to have this all written out. This one's a very nice one. So this line right here, this is what runs the report. Just that line right there. This here tests for reports being open. If reports is open, it closes it. This just gives us a second timeout. This writes a log file that says we started the report. And this writes the log file that says we ended the report. That's all that, that's just going on here. So we close reports. We log that we're starting. We run the report. We log that we ended. For troubleshooting, it's nice to have that extra log file. Not required, though, right? So um, now to make this one work for the report we're talking about, what I do is I click edit and I copy the report name. You could type this. I'm going to do a control C. I'm going to cancel that so I don't change it, right? Click yes. And then in here, in the log section, I'm going to say I started that report, right? So I'm going to paste the name in here just so that I know that that report's running. This is actually where we say what reports are run right here between the quotes. So we paste that in there. Boom, we're running a report. And then we're going to say, hey, I'm ending my run of that report this morning. Uh, so let's take a look at the rest of that middle line. So over here, you got to make sure you're at the right path, right? You got to make sure your your user account is correct. So sysadmin, sysadmin, or create a, a reports account that can run reports and have the password be like reports backwards, strooper. That's a good one. Um, 
over here we got to make sure we're in the right place so this this report here is in the other menu right so you see over here um, if it's in the other menu I've got to tell it it's in the other menu then here this tells it how to export so I'm saying export that to PDF right there are five options there right so let's copy this here and let's look at those five options real fast so that if you are doing this you'll be aware of them so PDF or Excel right or Excel TXT right or TXT and of course the least common one HTML I've used it by the way so th those are the commands though that could go in this PGS one here if you're going to export it out now if you're going to export it out then you got to say where to put it that's what this does right here so it says put it in the R reports weekly folder I mean just have a place to put it right this thing basically says where the RPT file is sitting. That's all this says. So this here has to match this here, right? And this just says run silent, that's all that says. And that's it right there. That That is the, the whole thing. Yeah, it really doesn't like that, does it? I'm going to switch it to a Word doc and send that out to you guys so you guys have it. Because uh, it just seems awkward that it won't let me do that. Copy, open a Word doc, paste it in there. Save as uh, report batch file right Well, I'm not sure why that's not working, but it doesn't seem to be working. It should let us put that. Let's try this. Oh, cancel. Oh. 
Well, that was painful, but um, that has to be in a, a a text file, like basically a TXT file, and it has to be renamed to BAT at the end, right? If you're going to use that, if you're going to use this here, it has to be in this format as a BAT file. Because as a BAT file, it, it's an executable and can be run, right? Okay. This, this is one of those things that if you're going to do this yourself, you definitely do not want to do it on your own. You want to you want to actually have something like that that you can start from and then just modify the report name as needed, right? That's way too much work to write from scratch. Um, all right, so um, let's just see here if it works. Uh, reports is open right now on my bottom taskbar. And if we go into my batches folder and we try and run this, reports closed immediately. And it should have ran that report, but the problem with that report is it's filtered pretty heavily. So I'm guessing we didn't get anything, or else I don't have a C reports folder. I don't have a C reports folder, right? So, right, I don't have an R reports folder. That's the problem. So, uh, okay, so let's try this again. New folder reports. And new folder weekly so if you're doing this obviously i think you can tell from my experience just now um test it just gonna say we human beings it's easy to make mistakes all right so let's um edit this here right click edit okay so first off that's wrong it's gonna have to be a c path right and th this here is not right in my installation, so it's going to have to be sysadmin, sysadmin, right? And this path is wrong right here, right? That's a C drive. This is a C drive. Everything else looks okay. Let's try that again, file, save. Yeah, no records found. Yeah, we sort of knew that was coming. That was se severely filtered, right? So, but it ran. So if I go look here in uh, reports weekly, it tried to put a file here, and the file is just going to say that there's no records, right? So it worked, though. Now, if you're going to email that, you then have to do the email piece, right? Now, the email piece, which is a little more complex than this, not much, actually. It's just I, I would need to give you the files. If you don't already have the files, I'd need to give them to you. And that's a, a bigger ask than just dropping in a little uh, handout, basically. But in, um, we would file transfer this whole folder over to you. There's the um, there's the weekly part of it. In here, you've got um, you've got an executable and a a like key file that goes with it. This is one set right here. In this auto email section, there are eight more. So you got the five here, and then the, then you got the daily, monthly, and weekly that are named, and then you got five generics plus the original two. That, kind of, that we usually just float around with. All of these will run, and what we have to do, you can open up any one of these 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 auto reps to find out how to work this, but if you open up reps, any one of these, uh, actually, I thought some of them had instructions in them. Yeah, there you go. So it's got this instruction at the top. This is irrelevant. This doesn't change anything here. Um, but uh, what you have to do is you have to um, go in and put the, the the email information in here, right? And the, who it's sending to, the subject, the attached, the directory to pick them up in, what the key element in the file is. So right now, and for quite a while here, if you're sending reports out and it's date stamping those reports, right? The, the number two is gonna be in the file, right? So you see here, uh,
Right. So 2021 right there, right, is is mixed into the date stamping in that thing. So so there's going to be a two in these reports. So if you just said all files that contain a two, right? Now, then you set the password up here. So what you have to do is you have to go out and build a Gmail account, right? You have to go to Gmail and build a new account. And, well, let's see here. Um, Okay, so I just did a quick search for less secure apps and usually you can just find it right away. I'm guessing that um, since this is tied to my Gmail, uh, it's giving us um, a hard time. All right, let's try this then. Let's just go. Well, this is turning into more of a more of a project than I really expected for a webinar. Uh, the point is we have to set up a new Gmail account, right? That's the point. And when you set the new Gmail account up, the reason you set it up is because you have to turn on less secure apps, which is a setting on a brand new account that's pretty easy to find. Just search, sign into the new account, search for less secure apps, flip it to on. We wanna have that feature on. That feature will turn itself off automatically if you don't use it all the time. So you wanna set up reports to start running on a regular basement basis out of that. And so what we do is we we would take the, um, once that once the account is set up and our, our little file is directed towards that account, right? So we have uh, auto reports, we have a set of these we're using. So we'll say we're using, you know, one here and one, right? So these two here, what I normally would do is copy those over my batches folder and I would run this out of here. That's what I would do. But then I would set this up. I would edit it, all the values I need to have in there just right with the password name and everything. And then what you do with this is copy this to the root of the C drive on whatever you're on. That's where it's gonna look for it. The executable is gonna look for it on the root of the C drive. And the first time you do this, Honestly, I would love to help you or have any other tech here help you. It's not that hard to do. All right, so then once you have once you have the batch file created and you have your email set up and you have your email executable here, then then um, the batch file and the executable would need to be scheduled. So to do that, we would just go into the Windows scheduler to get to the Windows scheduler in either Windows 7 or Windows 10, and my VM should be on Windows 10. I've got a new VM I'm setting up right now, but haven't got there yet. Uh, if we look for task, okay, if we look for task, we can find task scheduler, right? There's the task scheduler in Windows 7, and if I pop down here and type task in Windows 10, right? I can find the task scheduler in Windows 10 as well. And they're basically exactly the same. In here, if we're on the library, <laughs> we should see a retail pro folder. If we don't see a retail pro folder, right click and add a new folder. You cannot add a new folder from the root. You have to be on the library to add a new folder. Anyway, once we add a new folder, then you come down to that folder. Right click down here and add a new task. So create a new task. We gotta, we gotta do the general, the trigger and the action. The general is uh, auto email weekly, whatever you wanna call it, right? Reports. Um, run whether you're logged in or not. 
at the highest level, always good. That's all we need here. Uh, trigger, this is just what time we're gonna run it. So we click new here. <clears throat> Sometime very quickly, it pops up and shows us how to run this. There we go. So one time daily, every day, weekly or monthly, I'm gonna say weekly on every Monday morning at whatever time we want, five in the morning, right? Um, probably a good idea to come down here and say um, stop task if it goes more than 30 minutes is the lowest setting, right? Still, it shouldn't take anywhere near that, but it's nice to have a fail safe in case it gets hung up or something, right? Uh, click OK, go to actions, add a new action, browse to your batch file. So that was going to be on C, Retail Pro, reports batches there's my weekly batch file open that up boom uh put the start in path the start in path is this right here right so i'm just going to grab that and copy that put that in the start in i don't need any parameters the parameters are in the batch file that's why we're using a batch file then go ahead and add the other piece which is the automatic email right add in the start in path for that and we have just scheduled that. Uh, click OK and give it the credentials needed in Windows. Now, uh, if your um, if your credentials blow up, right? Come back to the Generals tab, change User Group, go to Advanced and Find. So if you find, you'll see all of these down here. Pick the one you 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 need. Uh, Click OK, click OK, and then when you click close, it'll be on that one, and you can just put in WS1, WS1, right? But that's how you schedule it, right there. Uh, a few pieces kind of went over very quickly there. The email piece, again, uh, I would want you to get that set up and tested with a tech if possible, because once it's set up and tested one time, it's good, and you're going to be able to then add additional scheduled uh, report groups and things to run out forever, right? Um, and so you want to have something like this, like a, a reports directory that has weekly, monthly, end of month, whatever you want to call it, daily, uh, you know, Jeff's reports, whatever you want to do, right? You want to have a place where all these go and then they get picked up and emailed or not. They could just run up the network somewhere and have them be available for accounting to just open up as needed, right? All right, so that was an exciting hour and uh, and 50 minutes. I know that you guys probably are all asleep by now, but uh, is there any questions? Did I go over anything too quick? Do you want to see anything again? All right, well, um, hoping that you guys are still awake. I'm going to say thank you guys for hanging on to the bitter end, uh, Craig, Leslie, and Maureen. Um, stay safe out there. and. Um, Give me an email, Jeff K at Big Hairy Dog. If you have any questions you want to follow up on, this is recorded and the recording will get posted and you guys will get a link to the recording uh, just in case you want to relive this exciting throw back two hours. All right, thank you guys. I'm going to wrap up, I guess. All right, bye-bye.